Okay, so I'm going to be walking you through how to install the brand new Answer preamp from Truman Audio, which is a 25 dB transparent inline preamp similar to a Cloudlifter or an SE Dynamite or any of those other great products, except it goes directly into the back of an SM7B or even an SM7. So I'm going to walk you through how to install this. There are only six wires that you need to connect. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Some of the tools that you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver like this. You're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver like this and some wire cutters and strippers like this. I kind of have the uh, combo set here. You're also going to need a soldering iron. This is my Heiko soldering station and some solder. So let's go for it. So as you can probably tell, I've got my SM7 face down on my desk and I've just got it secured a little bit in this small table vise just to keep it from moving. The first thing we need to do is unscrew this back panel. Once we have that off, I'm going to actually use our flathead to do this. You can just stick this in very carefully and pull off the back. Here it comes. Okay, very thin plate. Set that aside. Remember that on the traditional SM7B, the sure text is actually upside down compared to the yoke mount. Okay, so now we have four other screws to remove, which are flathead this time. So we need this. So here's a tip for you. These four screws are very tiny and they're very finicky. They don't want to come out. They're very, very small. You can barely see it there. won't even focus. So I'm going to actually use this little pick tool to pull this entire assembly out. Now, this is very easy to do this. You can use a really tiny screwdriver, but watch out because these two plates will come off. Okay, so don't let these fall down into the body the mic. I'm just going to peel those off. They're, you know, metal. They're durable. Um, and you can very clearly tell which one goes where. This is, you know, the high pass versus flat, and this is the flat versus presence boost. So now what you'll see inside of here, is we have two slider switches, and we have four primary wires going to these switches. And like I said, the answer preamp is essentially going to replace what's here. And there's six wires we need to solder, so we're going to get into that with a little more detail. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is clip the wires that are connected to the switch and try to clip them as close as you can to the actual switch so you have plenty of wire lead to work with, okay? So we're going to clip just a little bit. Now one tip that I have is to clip it as close as you can while still preserving a little bit of the color. So something like this. So I could still tell that there was a black wire there, right? But it's like a millimeter or two left. Okay, black wire, black wire. This is a green wire. You can still tell there was green there. And then yellow here. Okay, so now I have a lot of wire length. And I, if I really, really had to remember, I could tell, ah, oh, there's my, my yellow wire, my green wire, my two black wires. Down inside of the mic body, you'll see there is a clear wire right here. Now, if you use some needle nose pliers like this and you pull up this wire, you'll see it is actually two wires connected together with some heat shrink. So what you need to do is clip this right in the middle to separate these two wires, okay? So the clear side here is going to the cable, which goes to the XLR mount, or the XLR jack. And then there's a black one coming out of this as well. So you should have clear and black coming out of the side here. And the clear should connect to this heat shrink we're going to clip this right in the middle, like so. So then we have two new wires to work with. And remember, this side is clear and the other side is white. Okay, so now you can see we have six wires. We have a black coming from the cable. We have a clear coming from the cable. We have a white coming from the little board inside of the mic. And we have a yellow, another black, and a green. Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see these colors, but those are the six wires that we need. So now all we need to do is very carefully strip back those wires. I recommend using something that has a gauge stop so you can make sure not to cut too deep into the wire. And we need to strip back about a quarter inch of every wire here. So go ahead and do that.
Now, as you're going through, it's a good idea just to go ahead and twist things together now, just to make sure it doesn't get messy, wires don't get entangled with each other. So as you strip them back, go ahead and spin them around to tighten up those wires. We've got all of our wires stripped and prepped. The one that was under the heat shrink appears to have a little bit of solder, so I'm just going to clean that off to make sure that it can still fit inside of the circuit board. There we go. Now it's time to install the answer preamp. So you're going to hold the little circuit board facing towards you with the holes facing towards you. And the very first wire you need to solder in, just so you have a good reference, is this far left hole, and you're gonna put the green wire inside of there. So you're gonna stick it up from the back and take the wire up top and solder it. Now to do this, I'm probably gonna reorient this a little bit or perhaps find something to clamp this down just so it stays in place. We'll see. The first wire you need to install is the green wire which is here. Okay, this is gonna be a little tough to see, I apologize, but uh, you're gonna to wanna to solder it into the very first opening here, right? So we're going to make sure that the wire is twisted, which it is, and we're going to push it up through the hole. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see that on camera, but it's sticking up just a little bit, and if you kind of crimp it just a little, you can actually set the answer preamp down kind of on the lip of the mic body. If you orient it just right, you can take just a little bit of solder and you can solder it directly into that first hole. Okay, you don't need much. So this is now stable. Once we have this, things get a lot easier. So if you can figure out how to get that first wire soldered, the rest uh, is much, much simpler. From there, we're gonna solder in from left to right, yellow, and then we're gonna go black, which is the XLR black from here. And then we're gonna go clear. And then we're gonna have a space. And then we're going to have the other black wire, which is from the board. Then we're gonna have another space. And then finally, we're gonna have the white wire. I'm gonna fast forward so you can see it when it's done. One really important thing I'd like to note is just take your time, just clean things up as you go, check your work. I noticed that my very first wire, the green wire, was hanging down a little bit and there was some exposed wire. So I just heated up the joint and pushed it all the way through and clipped off the excess. You can see that I'm clipping off uh, the little bit that's left as I go. And a little tip is you can put your finger over the clip to prevent that piece from flying off into the air. So you hold it next to the joint, put your finger over it, clip, and it will get stuck between your finger and the clippers. If you don't have these needle nose pliers, I highly recommend getting some on Amazon. They're just a couple of bucks. And we are good to go. On to the next step. So now it is time to install our brass plate. Now our brass plate comes with these little sliders which you can just usually push right out of the brass plate. Okay, And you're going to make sure this is right side up. And the easiest way to do this is to first align the answer preamp loosely where it needs to be. Something like this. Okay. It's all right if those switches flip. And then you can set your brass plate over it. And you're going to try to screw in this top screw first. So you're going to hold the switches with your hand. As you first, you're going to set in one of these little tiny silver screws, flathead. And you're going to hold this in one hand as you align. 
and screw this in. Once you get one screw in, the rest becomes easier. Okay, now that you have gotten them all in, just loosely tightened, you can go through and kind of snug those up a little bit more just to make sure that everything is secure. Okay, now as you remember, our original had our logo like this, readable upside down from your view, perhaps. This is the same way. If you're not 100% sure, you can see that this first switch here is larger than these other two switches. This is for our bypass switch, and these two are for our presence and high pass. So you can see on the actual preamp, it says 48 for phantom power, meaning the unit is engaged. Here's our presence boost, here's our high pass. So we can now just set this over, snug it up over the switches. Again, the pick tool is handy for aligning the screw holes. Once you get it all lined up, you can kind of tighten that up like that. You can kind of see how well is it lining up with the actual holes inside of the mic body. Once you have that, you can take your longer black screws, which are Phillips, set them down into the holes. And tighten them up. Okay, so we are done. That's all it really took. It's very easy. Really, the only tricky part is getting that first wire soldered in. And some of those little screws are a little annoying to deal with. But once you get those screws out, once you get them back in, once you get the wires, you know, trimmed up and you get that first wire soldered, the rest is pretty easy. Okay, pretty much anyone who has ever built a guitar pedal or done some amp modifications or guitar wiring, you're probably plenty capable of doing this. It just takes a little patience, so just take your time. Now one thing I wanted to note about this that might confuse some of you slightly different than the SM7's orientation is, so on this there's a plus 48 switch. When the switch is towards that position it means the answer preamp is on. When the switch is down it means the answer is off and this is now passive. Okay. Now unlike the SM7, which has a high pass filter and a presence boost. These switches are set up slightly differently. When you push the middle switch up towards the symbol, the presence boost is in. And on this, when you push this up, the high pass filter is in. On an SM7, that is flipped because you push it down to cut low end. But on this, you push up towards the symbol, okay? Now again, you would, you would hear it if you were listening to it the high pass filter on an SM7B is pretty obvious. So, you know, just talk into it for a second and you'll be able to tell which is which. But in general, I tend to like the SM7 flat, so I'm going to leave these down, down, and this up. But if I need a high pass, I can turn that on. Presence boost, turn that on. So that's all there is to it. For more information on the answer preamp, check out trumanaudio.com. That's T R U M A N. This is really affordable, it's a cool, fun project only takes you about 20, 30 minutes, especially if you're pretty good with a soldering iron, right? And it turns this mic into the handy studio and live tool that you've always wanted it to be with no external boxes or XLR barrels or extra cabling needed. It's now permanently installed in your mic. It can be undone at any time. Just make sure to keep your old stuff and you can turn it off to have a stock SM7. Don't really know why you'd ever need to remove it because you can bypass it. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time on Recording Lounge. See ya.